The plan is to perform deadly coronavirus experiments on zoo bats, as well as pain Ebola test on baby pigs, primates, and other animals. So welcome back to the channel today, everyone. So the White Coast Waste Project exposed a few months back how the National Institute of Health, along with the Fauci Connected EcoHealth Alliance, was planning to spend over $12 million of taxpayers' money to import bats from Asia to a Wuhan-linked experimentation lab at the Colorado State University to infect said bats with deadly viruses kind of like we were told was not happening in a certain lab in China, right? The plan is to perform deadly coronavirus experiments on zoo bats as well as pain Ebola test on baby pigs, primates, and other animals. The lab is now slated to be complete by December of this year. So first things first, if you don't know who the White Coast Waste Project is, they're a nonprofit organization dedicated to stopping taxpayer-funded experiments on animals and highlighting the abuses happening to animals with your money. So they were the organization that in 2021 exposed the inhumane Beagle experiments that were being conducted at the time by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases under Fauci's supervision. And if you remember one of the one of the key highlights of that, one of the most disgusting things I've ever heard in my life is they actually they severed the puppy's vocal cords so that they couldn't cry out in pain. So that's the type of experimentation that's being funded with your tax money whenever you hear something like animal research funded by the NIH. Yeah. So, but back to Colorado State University and the bat experiments. So what we talked about earlier was exposed last year, but more recently, the White Coast Waste Project released documentations to an alarming pattern of lab accidents that have been taking place there. And these accidents come in like the form of bites, scratches, and even needle pricks while trying to inject different diseases or, ins or inject stuff into the animals. Um, some of these diseases are things like the coronaviruses, Zika, rabies, tuberculosis, and others into bats, cats, hamsters, mice. So let's read some of the accident reports. So the first one says, so laboratory acquired infections, research was being ramped down and stopped for change to critical operations only in March. An individual that had cold symptoms and a rash, the individual believed that the cold was passed from their partner and the rash was not uncommon for this individual during stressful times. Sometime later, the individual realized that this could have been a Zika infection because the individual, and it stops there. Next was a hamster bite from the SARS-CoV-2 virus, i.e. the same strain as COVID-19. says, hamster bite infected with SARS-CoV-2 was waking up from anesthesia and bit the finger of a researcher. Biting through the gloves, biosafety was contacted. The individual was following up with OCC Health. Biosafety made a recommendation for a different type of glove to prevent this in the future. An incident review meeting is being scheduled. This was a non-recombatant strain, thus no additional reporting required. Then how about, you know, rabies? The report says animal scratch slash bite. There have been a number of bites or scratches from cats in the rabies studies. The cats are wanting to play. They are looking at adding mesh or wire to cages so the cats cannot reach out. I don't know if you know too much about rabies. Now, rabies is curable. It's treatable if you catch it early. But rabies is 100% fatal if you actually start having symptoms. So if you... If you don't, if you're bit by an animal and you never go get tested to see if it, if you have rabies in your system, if you start showing signs of rabies, like symptoms, it's nearly 100% fatal. Yeah. And here's the last one that I will highlight. This one actually has a containment level on it. Um, it says the description of the incident occurred when a researcher was tail vein injection mouse with H1878 mycobac 
bacterium tuberculosis. The syringe contained PBS along with CD45PE antibody. The mouse moved, causing it to bevel into bev come out of the tail where there was a buildup of pressure because the vein was missed. As a result, the PBS syringe, possibly some blood from the mouse, escaped out of the biosafety cabinet and onto the researcher's face. I'm just picturing this scene where you're trying to inject something into the tail of the mouse and all this just blood and stuff just sprays... It's like a, it seems like a scene out of a movie. It's extremely, it's extremely gross, and it's also infected. It's biochemical infections, and this is this is just highlighting a few of these incidents. There's a there's a long list of these instance, instances. But now think about what happens in these situations, or could happen if a researcher gets bit by a bat that say has covid and that researcher then leaves the lab unknowingly having contracted the virus or like in one of the other instances they said the h18n11 influenza had not been shown to infect humans but we know how you know viruses mutate right we know how those virus mutations work so i guess what if that researcher who they considered a low-risk patient, ends up becoming patient zero for a viral infection in humans. I mean, it's not, it's obviously not unheard of for something like that to happen when you're dealing with dangerous viruses in this manner. If you're wondering what federal organizations are paying for this through the NIH, well, you have the National Science Foundation Department, the Energy Department of Interior, and even the Department of Defense Combating Weapons of Mass Destruction account. Wait, why would the Department of Defense need to fund disease research unless they think that a known enemy might release a virus as some sort of bioweapon, right? Hmm. Interesting. And lastly, let me just highlight Senator Joni Ernst's reaction um, to these instances. The non-compliant EcoHealth Alliance and its partners with a long track record of dangerous lab accidents should not be getting more taxpayer money for batty virus experiments. I am leading efforts to defund EcoHealth and risky research that can cause pandemics like the gain-of-function experiments EcoHealth funded at Chinese state-run Wuhan lab with taxpayer dollars. Lab leaks are inevitable, and we don't want the next outbreak to happen on our own backyard or near our military bases. But I guess with that, do you think taxpayer dollars should continue this research? This kind of experimentation, especially with the history of dangerous lab accidents, wasteful experiments, and, you know, animal abuses? I certainly don't. And if you want to find out more about this stuff and what else the White Coast Waste Project is doing, there is a link in the description. Or go on to whitecoatwaste.org or follow them on X at White Coast Waste. And also let me know what you think in the comments section. Click that like and subscribe button. Follow me across all social media platforms and I will see you next time.